How to Recognize False Teachers or False Prophets 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 of the King James Version says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We see in this verse that Peter acknowledges that false prophets have always plagued Israel, even in the days of the genuine prophets of God. People would attempt to gain recognition and build up a reputation for themselves by misleading God's people, by claiming that God had given them a message for Israel, when in actuality he had not. In this very verse, Peter reveals to us, the reader, that there will come a time where false teachers will rise up amongst the ranks of Christianity, and they will teach heresy. What is heresy, you may ask? Well, heresy is anything that contradicts the scriptures, any teaching that twists the truth. Peter warns that these false teachers will do everything in their power to deceive Christians to deny Jesus Christ. This same verse then details to us how the story will end for these false teachers. Swift destruction. The warning of Peter is becoming more and more apparent in today's day and age. I have seen ministers who stand on pulpits and say that Jesus is not the only way to God. I have seen Christian ministers who attempt to discredit the life of Jesus, stating that Jesus sinned while he was on this earth. All of these statements can be described in one word. They are all heresy. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Jesus never sinned either. He is the dictionary definition of perfect. If there are people who we should be very careful of as Christians in the world today, they are false prophets. We have been warned many times that these false prophets will come and deceive many. We were told that they will lead people astray, and it is not a lie. We can see them working in the world today. They are doing exactly what the Bible told us they will do. Their works are clearly in the world. They are taking people to the devil. They are taking people on the path of destruction and they blind many of their victims with things they want to hear. If you are following a leader, a teacher, or a prophet because they are telling you what you want to hear and not what God wants you to hear, be sure you are following a false prophet. Many Christians have been deceived. Many have already started bowing to the devil unconsciously, and many have turned their lives to become the synagogue of Satan. This wouldn't be the case if we, as the body of Christ, could discern the false prophets and false teachers so that we can run from them. You must know what their works are so that you can know how to protect yourself. What are their works? A sure sign of a false prophet or a wolf in sheep's clothing is that they please men. Galatians 1 verse 10 NIV Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. One of the works of these false prophets is that they want to be recognized as good people, so they please men instead of pleasing God. They water down the gospel message. My friend, the Word of God is not there to make you feel better about yourself or improve your self-esteem. The Gospel message is there for you to be saved. The Gospel message is there to guide you into the Kingdom of God, and the way only to do that is by first acknowledging that you are a sinner, and the wrath of God is the just reward for a disobedient sinner and that you must be born again. There are teachers of the world that used to be good teachers, but the pressure from the outside world overcame them and went after worldly things. Now all they teach about is five steps to be blessed, six ways to be rich, ten steps to your breakthrough, and they tell people what they want to hear. What is important in teaching is gaining the heart of men unto God, but the false teachers are not into this activity anymore. The message of the gospel is difficult for people to first hear. 
I once listened to a preacher who was asked, Is Jesus the only way to heaven? And he did not answer the question. He danced around the topic saying, I believe we all find our way to heaven individually. A second sign is that they give little or no reference to Jesus. They want to glorify and exalt themselves. They follow their selfish desires and make false prophecies. Jeremiah 14 verse 14 Then the Lord said unto me, The prophet's prophecy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them neither speak unto them, they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. False teachers don't have the understanding of salvation or repentance, so they don't speak about it. False prophets don't like to tell the people what will make them sober, they don't get involved in the commandments of the Bible and the basis of the gospel which is repentance. They leave that part out. They are more concerned with a seeker-friendly gospel. The gospel says, come and live in sin. Following the laws of God is outdated. The gospel is for all men and women, regardless of the sins the person struggles with, but the gospel does not encourage you to stay and live in sin. But the basis of the gospel is to repent and turn away from sin. They are good at masquerading themselves. We have read in the Bible about the wolves in the sheepskin, and the wolves are always about shedding blood. They are not easily seen and they can be mistaken for the real sheep. The false prophet hides under the disguise of being part of the body of Christ, but they are not. As Satan disguises himself as the angel of light, so also these false teachers are good at appearing as teachers of truth and the real teachers to be obeyed and followed. They are out there looking for who to pray in, and when they find one, they fill such with false doctrines. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13 They chase clout instead of holiness. The false teacher is self-important and always wants to be known everywhere. They get involved in politics or public offices not because they intend good, but because they want power and to become influential in every way. They find all the methods or ways of gaining followers to themselves instead of populating the kingdom of God with souls. They seek power and fame instead of seeking holiness and the power of God. 2 Peter 2 verse 1 and 2 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. We see in this verse Peter revealing that the false teachers will rise up from within the community of Christians. These deceivers will use deception in an attempt to convince believers to deny Jesus as Lord and Master. This is exactly what the Bible said would happen. Look at this verse that speaks about the last days. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Don't be surprised when you see people following strange doctrines. The Bible told us this would happen. Don't be shocked. Don't be perplexed. Believe what the Bible says. Many shall depart from the faith. This is why you see churches that openly encourage adultery and fornication. Churches that openly encourage sexual immorality. 
churches that openly discredit the Bible. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. The Bible told us this would happen. People will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. As a child of God, you need to protect yourself because the thing about deception is that most of the time a person who is being deceived does not even know they are being deceived. They think they are doing the right thing. They genuinely believe they are doing the right thing. Jesus warned us about deception multiple times. Matthew 24, 5 For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. What Jesus is telling us is that in the last days people will make grandiose claims of who they are and what they can do. People will make grandiose claims and promises. People will even claim to be Jesus himself. People will claim, if you give this amount of money, you will be healed. And people will fall for it. The number one way you can protect yourself from deception is for you to get to know your Bible for yourself. Get to know the Bible for yourself. That way, when anyone moves away from what this Bible says, you can pick up on it. You can identify it. Don't be rooted in a church, because the truth is there are churches that started well but over time, as they grew, they water down the gospel. Don't be rooted in a person, because people change. Be rooted in the Word of God, the unchanging Word of God. People can change, churches can change, but do you know what doesn't? The Word of God. Isaiah 8:20, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If there is disagreement between God's word and the word of the messenger, it isn't hard to figure out who is wrong. The messenger is wrong. The word judges the messenger. The messenger doesn't judge the word.